Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel, Rebecca Stitches, or welcome if this is your first time. Um, I'd just like to say again, like a big thank you for anyone that's um, liked, subscribed and commented on my um, videos. It really is, oh, well, unbelievable that 230 of you have subscribed and come back to watch my videos, so thank you. So this is just like a quick Friday sews this week. I haven't done haven't actually done a lot of sewing during July. I think I've made two things so far. I've made um, a backpack and um, a Rita shirt dress, which will be in like my July, August make probably at some point in the summer. Um, but it's just been busy. My youngest turned five and been working quite a bit. And then, yeah, just going out enjoying the summer with the kids. Um, apart from this week in the UK we've been having like a heat wave the past couple of two days it's still quite warm today so yeah I'm considering we're in a heat wave I have done a little bit of sewing in between like taking breaks for the heat so the two things that I thought I'd talk about today um, two things that I'm working on at the minute and then um, a couple of people asked about how I did my high round back and forward shoulder adjustment so I thought I'd tag that on to the end of this video, see if that's helpful. And also I have had a few comments about the sound in my videos. So hopefully um, that'll be remedied in this one. Um, if not, please let me know. Um, but unfortunately on YouTube, once you've put a video out, you can't go back and change it anymore. So I can't change the sound on it. Um, I do always like test them on my TV and my phone, which are always fine, but obviously I recorded it on my phone, so I guess that's why it probably sounds okay on my phone. But yeah, if there is any issues, let me know down below. And as always, links to anything that's still available and my measurements I'll put down below. So the first thing that I started working on this week were the Pietra shorts. And I don't know about you, but I am not, I'm not a shorts person. Whenever I've bought them ready to wear, I just hate hate how they look and they don't fit very well so I'm not convinced I am going to like these shorts but this heat wave has um, made me think about making some and I have actually got a couple of pyjama shorts but they're like short shorts and not kind of a style that I'd want for like wearing out and about so yeah this is a Pietra pattern by Closet Core and it comes in I think there's three views there's a tapered leg yeah there is a, a wide leg, which I've made before, a tapered leg, which I've also made before, and then the shorts view. Now, when you look online at people wearing the shorts, and like on this pattern, I don't know how representative it is of how short they are, but I feel like they're, they're quite short. So I have um, lengthened the pattern legs by one and a half inches. Now, I didn't use the short and the length of mine on the pattern because that was sort of in the crotch area so if you look at say if this was a pattern piece the length and the short of mine was that across here i didn't want to lengthen the crotch so i've i lengthened it here right around here and i did my one and a half inches in on the front and back so i've made a size 16 graded to a 20 at the waist so because of that and i've done this before i'm going to add an invisible side zipper um because that's quite a lot to grade from so i wouldn't be able to pull them over my hips and my bum i don't think so i've put the invisible side zipper in before and closet Co. i have a really good um blog post about it and talk you through it so on that blog post, I'm a little bit worried actually, because before when I've graded between the size and the Pietra pants and had a the zip on the side, um, I haven't taken any off the back shorts, but in reading the blog properly this time, she mentions about, to reduce like the gathers on the back, she mentions to take off an inch at the top of the waistband down to nothing at the hips, which I've done. Um, now I'm worried that they're not going to fit, but we'll see. Um, I'll put it around the waist. 
but yeah, we'll see, won't we, when I can um, fit them and try them on. So I've got two. I've added um, like the waist, well, it's not a waistband, is it? It's like a front facing, the waistband on the back, and then I've sewn up one side completely, as you can see, and then this side I've sewn up to where my invisible zipper will stop. And that is because I thought I have quite a bit of elastic in my stash, but I don't have five centimetre wide elastic, which I need for the waistband. So I've ordered that and I'm just waiting for that to come. It's got the pockets on, as the pants do. So yeah. Just waiting for the elastic and then I can get going with these and then hopefully I'll be able to finish them for my holiday and it is just um, I've used this fabric before it's a viscose linen stretch from Fofa Fabrics it's like 749 a meter I think so I thought I'd try them out in this fabric it took like a meter there's no more than a meter um, so yeah We'll see how they go and whether they get much wear um, this summer. So yep, so that's them. And I have, I know you might overlock it looks white, but I don't have, um, don't have full black overlocker cones. So there's two black and two white. And obviously no one's going to see it, so I'm not that fussed. And I could have had two navy blue with the two black. But I'm going to be sewing up like a knit t-shirt soon, probably after I've finished these two. And that's why. And I was just like, oh, I can't bother to change all four of them. I'm just being lazy. So yeah, so that's my first one, which I'm looking forward to seeing if I, I like them and how much wear I get out of them. And then the other thing I'm making to go with those. So I had that viscose linen fabric in my stash. Um, but I bought this fabric. And it's been in quite a few of the shops. I know So Me Sunshine had it. Um, it's a double gauze. And it's got, are they? Is that apricots maybe? Oranges? Peaches? I don't know. Little flowers on. And this black background. And they also do it in like a creamy white double gauze as well. And then there's another fabric that's slightly different print. But they're all sort of matching. And I've been looking at this fabric for quite a while and then so my sunshine sold out and then i saw fabric godmother had it and they had a bit of a sale on so i was like this is my chance i'm gonna buy it and i think they'll make quite a cute pairing together so i'm making it's the helen's closet gilbert top and i'm making view a with the tie front so i've made uh, the gilbert top before i've made um this view and this view before and i really like this view and this view i don't like really like wide sleeves because i find it just catch them on everything so i um, elasticated the cuffs on that but yeah i'm making this one for the summer on this fabric so i've got as far as i've done the neckline done the collar done the um yoke and then i've just sewed up the facing you can see to the front and I've turned that over so the next step showing the side seams the next step is to do the bottom hem before we put the sleeves in so I'm really pleased with how this is looking I I've washed the double gauze because I pre-wash all my fabrics but I didn't actually iron it before I cut it out um because I find if you made things in double gauze before I don't know if any, anyone else finds this but I feel that you iron it and then you cut everything out and stuff and then it ends up feeling a bit tight and I don't know if that's because you've ironed the crinkle out and then obviously it's crinkled again which makes it smaller so I didn't iron it although obviously I have had to iron like I ironed the interfacing on the facing and then I've used the iron to like turn the hem and stuff obviously because otherwise I wouldn't be able to sew it but yes, I'm, and my other Gilbert top is quite roomy, so I'm hoping this one's fine. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to say something on, off my mind. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Um, 
yeah so I'm really really looking forward to this I did find it pulled a little bit in the fabric like you can't see it but there's like a little pull sometimes so I changed to a Microtex needle even though I was using like a 70 um, fine needle so yeah oh, but I do hate facings like facings like this like on this this side's fine it's all gone in okay but on this side you can see there's a little like tuck there can you see that tuck because even though I've, I've interfaced this facing and it's gone fine on that side this side too much fabric so I've had to tuck the facing in and sew it down but obviously no one's going to see that so that'll be fine so yeah what is everyone else making for summer have you, anyone got any summer wardrobe plans I cannot wait to be wearing this and hopefully I like the shorts and wear them out of the house and not just around the house so yeah, in this one I made, let me just check, I just made the size that I've previously made because that's what the pattern was cut out in and I've worn it recently and it still fits. So I've made size 14 on the top, grayed into a 16 at the waist, which would have been based on my measurements like a while ago, but like I said, I've been wearing it and it fits, so yeah, I'm not going to change it. Oh, I haven't talked about what I'm wearing. So this is, I think it's probably about three years old, two or three years old. And this is the second time I've worn it this week. It is the Megan Nielsen Darling Rangers dress. And I've put patch pockets in this one. I have done a full bicep adjustment because I find her sleeves are quite tight. I think probably about an inch one, I think. So yeah, and this is in, I've got the waist, the waist tie on. This is in a Lady McElroy viscose linen and I literally wear this all the time I'll put a video of me wearing it I have also lengthened it because I prefer my dresses to come sort of mid calf um, so I don't have to worry about the wind whipping them up as I'm walking around so yeah I always get like compliments on this when I wear it and I didn't try to pattern match the front but I think it looks looks quite good there that's like just a happy accident and on this one as well I've I've done my usual high round neck and forward shoulder adjustment which then I do find obviously if I don't do that my clothes slip to the back quite often but also the bust starts are then um, quite raised but once I've altered like the top bit then they do tend to generally don't have to move them around too much right then so that's literally all I've got planned to finish this week because I am working um well this is coming out on Friday so I've worked Thursday night, last night and I'm working Friday night and then my sister and her family are coming down for the weekend so that's going to be lots of fun and then the school holidays start so I'm not sure how much more I'm sure I'll get some sewing done but not obviously loads so what I'll pop in next is how I do my hair around neck and forward shoulder adjustment and I'll just show you the book first. So this is the book, The Palm and Fletch, Complete Guide to Fit In. Um, I'm sure there's other books out there to use. I do find, um, so yeah, you've got like, yeah. It does have a lot of diagrams, which I like, because sometimes I find the diagrams easier to, to go through and copy than some of the wording. Um, yeah, so I shall go through that with you and then, yeah, I hope everyone has a nice summer um, and isn't too hot and hopefully this heat wave will calm down a bit. But yeah, any questions, anything you'd like to say, pop it down below in the comments. Thanks. Okay, so the first adjustment I'm going to do is the high round back adjustment. And to do that, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw in my seam allowances. So on turning buttons, they're all one and a half centimetres, which is like five eighths of an inch. I'm just going to draw that in. And then 
on the back seam as well. So they recommend when you're doing your high round back adjustment to do it straight under where the seam allowance is and that way you're not going to add any length to your neckline. So just as I've already drawn in my seam allowance I'm going to cut along that line up to where it meets the seam allowance on this side. And then I generally also do like a 1.5 centimetre adjustment on high round neck and on um, forward shoulder adjustment. So what I've got here is my 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to stick this in here. and sellotape it down at this edge and then also line this edge up if you can see just there it's on five eighths of an inch tape that down and then as you can see it comes back here and depending on how wide or narrow you have it can cause just a bit of a hinge, but that's fine. So just tape those bits down. And then that bit just there. And then I just chop off all the excess that we don't need and just true that up so yeah that is my high round neck adjustment so measure your seam allowance and then Cut across to the seam allowance on this side. It may be on the arm hole, arm side, or it may be on the shoulder, depending on what kind of top it is. And then add however much of a increase that you need. So I just chose one point five centimeters as I when I started out as a good starting point when looking at where my tops used to drop. Um, and yeah, that seems to work for me. Okay, so next I'm going to do my forward shoulder adjustment and for forward shoulder adjustment you need to adjust the back and the front pattern pieces. Um, but I'll start off with the back because we're already on that piece. So I've drawn in, in a different club pen just so you can see it a bit easier, my seam allowance on the shoulder at 5 eighths of an inch because that's half a centimetre and then we've still got it coming up here from the one I did earlier. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, actually, we also need the seam allowance from this, um, this edge. So I'll just mark that in. Yeah. So I always like to add, I always like to take my seam allowance off and keep that before adding, and then add um, my adjustment underneath the seam allowance. So cut up to that point. You can also cut into this little bit as well if you think it's going to need to hinge a little bit. And then again, I've got my one and a half centimetre adjustment that I want to make. So I'm going to pop that in. So again, lining it up there. Then again, line up this edge 
the five eighths, one one and a half centimeter adjustment. Stick that down, and then just like to secure the paper a little bit there, and then. Screw up this curve a little bit on here. And then just cut off the excess that you don't need. And I'm not a professional, obviously, disclaimer, I'm not a professional. This is just me having a look online and in this book that I'm using and doing my interpretation of what they think you should do and it works for me. So yeah, so on the back pattern piece I've got my high round neck adjustment and my forward shoulder adjustment. There we are. So this is my front bodice and again I've marked in the seam allowance one and a half centimeters and then I'm going to cut up to where they meet snip into this side in case it needs to hinge a little bit so we've got my front bodice piece I've cut along to um, the seam allowance down from the seam allowance and then on the back we've added because we want the seam to come further forward so on the front we need to take away one and a half centimeters so what I do is from here move that out of the way it's easier to see just took that out of the way and then I'm going to mark one and a half centimeters from where we've cut Just there. So what you add onto the back, you take away from the front, and then just stick it down. And that is how I do my high round back and forward shoulder adjustments. So Front bodice, I've taken away the one and a half centimeters for the forward shoulder adjustment, and on the back bodice, I've added one and a half centimeters. Now, I mean, this is the indigo, and I haven't made it yet, so this is going to be like a toile. So yeah, so this is going to be a toile. So I know the indigo has a facing, and I don't really like facing. So on this, I probably would just find the neckline. But if I was keeping a face in, because I've taken away the same amount from the front that I've added on the back, I've never adjusted my facing pieces. And you could adjust them. You could go and do the same adjustment. But because the actual width of the neck and the, the face in hasn't changed, I've never had an issue with it. So I don't adjust my face in. That's probably not the correct thing to do. But like I say, I add on the back and take away on the front and it's never been an issue for me so i hope you find that um useful any questions or other recommendations let me know down below thanks bye so like i say i'm not a professional this is just i've looked around a few online and in a few books and this is how i do my adjustments and i find generally they work for me they don't it doesn't always completely stop um or work as well as i hope it would but generally helps on the majority of things um help with the tops like falling back and having to pull them forward all the time and them sort of sitting more in the middle of my shoulders which also like probably poor posture on my part as well so yeah i hope you found that helpful um any questions let me know down below. Have a good summer.
and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.